Hi, and welcome to this uh, webinar focusing on the Faculty of Engineering of Lund University. Uh, the name of the Faculty of Engineering is LTH, and that is the name we will use today during the presentation. Uh, this does not mean that we're not a part of Lund University, it's a name we have for historical reasons. So LTH is uh, what we will call ourselves today. Uh, during this session, we will present the Faculty of Engineering, focusing on our research, our education, and student life. Uh, during the first half, we will give a, a presentation using a slideshow, and after that, we will open up for a chat if you have questions, and we will try to answer them the best we can. We are four representatives from uh, the Faculty of Engineering LTH here today. My name is Helen von Wackenfeld. I work at the faculty office as the coordinator of some of our master's programs. My name is Mar Morales and I'm a student here at LTH. My name is Christy Kleiberg. I'm also an international coordinator at the faculty office. Hello everyone. My name is Martin Tudor. I am the assistant dean for international relations at the faculty of engineering at LTH. And there is also a fifth person with us in the room today. Her name is Cecilia Carlson, and she is working in the team for international marketing and recruitment. And she will facilitate this um, webinar behind the scenes, and she will help us specifically during the chat uh, in the end of the session. Uh, we would like to point out that, that this uh, webinar is about the Faculty of Engineering in general. Uh, if you are in the process of making an application to one of our international master's programs uh, right now, uh, we will not be able to answer specific questions related to your application. You are very welcome to get back to us via email or via the Lund University Facebook page with your questions and we will of course answer them. Uh, but today we, we will focus on more general issues related to the Faculty of Engineering. Uh, there was also a webinar on the 5th of uh, December uh, addressing just questions about uh, admission. Uh, and if you want to, you can find it on the LU webpage or on YouTube. For, uh, it's, um, you can find it online and you can watch it there. So let's start with uh, the presentation and we will be back uh, in a short while. So I'm just going to share the presentation here. <laughs> okay, uh, so we like to describe LTH as a place for dreams and discoveries within the three fields of technology, architecture and design. Uh, we actually have over 1,000 researchers working hard every day to create better living conditions for people all around the globe and to promote sustainable use of resources of our planet. Uh, every year we publish about 100 theses and 1,700 research findings and together they pave the way for scientific discoveries and new innovations. Being part of Lund University gives us the opportunity to cooperate across faculty boundaries and we work together with other research disciplines to explore and create for the benefit of the world. This is our vision. So here are some facts and figures about LTH. Actually, we're one of the largest faculties of Lund University, both in terms of turnover and number of students. We have about 10,000 students, uh, and that means that approximately 25% of the students at Lund University are studying engineering, architecture, or design at our campus. Uh, we have about 500 PhD students and 1,600 employees, and our turnover is about 1.6 billion Swedish crowns, and that equals roughly to 170 million US dollars. Uh, in our budget, one third goes to education and two thirds goes to cover research operations. Uh, and this is the reason why all our in educational programs have really close links to strong research environments and access to great lab facilities. We will get back to that later in the presentation. So LTH is a comprehensive faculty. We conduct research and education in a wide range of topics. 
we have 75 divisions grouped into 18 different departments and you can see them listed on this slide. Um, for our Swedish speaking students, we offer 16 five-year integrated master's programs with over 80 different tracks. So that's quite a lot. And some of these tracks are also open to international students in the form of two-year master's programs. And we will get back to those as well. Our students, both Swedish and international, have plenty of opportunities to interact with industry during their studies. Our teachers have close links to companies and organizations through their research, and they organize study visits, uh, they invite guest lecturers, and they have real life cases integrated into their courses. And during the final semester, students do their degree project or thesis, you could say, uh, and one third of the students at the within the international master's programs at LTH, they do their thesis in a company, and that way they're getting invaluable experiences from industry. So here's a list of the master's programs that we offer. Um, they are 18 and we are now open for applications. Um, they are all two years long and the language of instruction and examination is English only in these programs. However, in the classroom, there is always a mix of Swedish and international students. Two of our programs are European joint master's programs that we run together with other universities. These are fire safety engineering and food innovation and product design. We also have one international master's program at our other uh, campus in Helsingborg, outside of Lund, uh, and this program is energy efficient and environmental building design. And if we look over the last five years, we've had about 400 applications for each of our programs, ranging from 300 to 500. Um, we have very satisfied students, 86% of them stated in a survey that we did in May, 20, May this year, that they would recommend their program to a friend. Uh, you should also know that we're in the process of launching two more master's programs, one in virtual reality and augmented reality, and one in sustainable energy. Virtual reality and augmented reality. Did I say that right? Yeah. Mm. And one in sustainable energy. Mm. And they will hopefully start in uh, 2021, uh, but this is not yet confirmed. But keep a lookout for these two programs. So our campus is very international. A large percentage of our PhD students have an international background and we gather researchers from all over the world. We also have around 1,000 international students on campus every year. Uh, 600 of them are degree-seeking students in our international master's programs. Uh, this year we admitted a little over 300 students from over 50 different uh, countries. Uh, we're also very popular among exchange students since we have more than 500 courses that are given in English. Uh, during the current year, we are receiving around 450 exchange students from over 30 different countries. So um, now I will give the word to Martin Tunier, who will talk about the research here at the Faculty of Engineering, LTH. Thank you very much. So uh, Lund University is a top 100 university in the world and we have, um, like was mentioned, the two thirds of the budget uh, at LTH goes to research and that is to a large extent world leading research. So examples of that is the material science and nanotechnology, for instance, uh, creating new materials for uh, the sustainable future. We have laser physics and combustion physics. Uh, combustion, physics combustion physics just got a grant of um, a substantial grant to look into uh, the combustion of metals, and that is one way to reduce uh, CO2 emissions to the atmosphere. Aerosol technology, on the other hand, they're looking into what is actually emitted into the atmosphere and how that is affecting the atmosphere as such. The Department of Automatic Control is one of the highest ranks in the world in its um, field, and we are also very strong on IT and mobile communications software engineering, biomedicine, functional foods is a big area for us, risk and safety management, transport and logistics. 
What is not mentioned in the list here is uh, all the research that we are performing on water, for instance, the clean water resources and also wastewater treatment. And we are currently holding the world record in 5G data rates. And you can see on the picture here, we have two of our former master students. To the left, we have Yao Vieira from wireless communications. And to the right, it's Stefan uh, Malkowski from embedded and um, electronics engineering. And I think most of you are familiar with the concept of Bluetooth for wireless communication. Another example of what has come out from Lund. But uh, also the students are uh, in many ways coming up with new innovations. Uh, and that's very important for us. And uh, this is an example of the hubbing uh, where two fem female students uh, invented this airbag helmet for bicyclists. And to the picture to the left, you can see there's a sort of collar um, around the neck. And if a person enters into an accident or falls over, then this airbag is inflated and protects the head, as you can see on the right figure. We are also working on uh, new materials that give the same performance as traditional materials, but removes um, parts that could be uh, harming health or environment. And the picture here shows one example of lead-free brass, where the physical properties are as good as the traditional brass, but now it, there is no lead that can injure people. Food research, we were talking about that, that we are prominent in that area. And oats is a fantastic resource. Uh, if you can then use the fibers, you can create foods that are good for health and resource efficient. And here we see one of my colleagues, uh, Federico Gomez, who is researching freshness in vegetables after freezing. So we don't have this, yeah. How do we explain it? Uh, like sagginess of vegetables after freezing, so they are crisp and nice. So, and that is uh, very useful. And there's a whole bunch of other innovations that comes from Lund. For instance, the diagnostic ultrasound, Proviva, the fruit drink with lactic acid bacteria that gives you better intestines. Uh, cancer treatment using lasers, our treatment for preeclampsia, solar cells using nanotechnologies to improving the efficiency of the solar cells, and then if energy efficient LEDs. So a lot of applications on related to energy. And we do have quite many different sort of labs and research facilities that students coming to Lund can get access to being part of uh, working at. But I will only mention two of these different uh, laboratories uh, at this time. And uh, it's the new coming facilities. So MAX4 is all, already in operation. And you can see the accelerator ring on the figure here. It's about 450 meters in diameter. And currently, we are building the spallation source, the European spallation source. And uh, that will probably be in operation by 2022 or 2023. And uh, these two facilities together complement each other. So uh, on the figure here, we can see that we are looking at the same concrete block with uh, fibers reinforcing, but you can look at quite many different materials. Both of these facilities, they are giant microscopes where you can look at materials on an atomic level. So MAX4 is using X-rays to accelerate electrons, and you can look at sort of harder materials. You can also look at wood, for instance. So it doesn't need to be very hard materials. While with the neutrons that you get from the ESS, you can study the soft materials, and that is beneficial for studying um, um, processes in the body, proteins, a lot of other stuff. And these sources are quite world unique. The power of ESS is 100 times stronger than any other spallation source in the world currently. 
And we think there will be about 3,000 full-time researchers working here. And that is places where you get access to. Our professors in Lund, and we're looking here at Anders Robertson from Automatic Control, looking at, he's working at autonomous systems. You can see a robot to the right of him. And uh, you can see he's smiling. It's a bit of you know friendly atmosphere here in Lund. Uh, there is no really not any closed doors between professors and students, and the professors generally like to get involved in discussions with students because we as professors, we can also learn something from students. It's not just us feeding information and ideas. So this interaction is very important to us. All right, then I have over the word to Kristen. Let Mark take it first. Thank you. And so, as I mentioned, my name is Mar Morales. I'm currently studying here in Lund University. I'm studying a master's in disaster risk management and climate change adaptation. And I will speak a little bit about what life uh, as a student is in Lund. So when it comes to academic life, as already has been mentioned, there is a very informal class environment. This means that you call professors by their first name. And it has been my experience that they are all very approachable, both the teachers and the faculty at the division. Um, during the class discussions, we are very active as students. I usually have a combination of both lectures and seminars, and sometimes even seminars are planned by the students, so we take charge of our own uh, learning outcomes and, and processes. There is always one or two courses going on at the same time, and at the end of each course, you usually have an examination, or uh, an assignment to complete, depends on your, on your master's and on each individual course. And at the end of every LTH program, you will have 20 weeks to complete your master's thesis. Uh, and the courses can be anything from two to 20 weeks long, depending on, on the course. Now we'll speak to you a little bit about LTH campus. This picture is, uh, shows a small lake that is in the middle of the campus. It is surrounded by benches and by walkways, and it is very, very nice during the, the spring and the summer to study or to just hang out there. So LTH campus is located at the north of Lund, and it is very easily accessible from any point in the city. Uh, most students bike, and they, it, it only takes a few minutes to bike from any point in the city to the campus. I live outside Loom, so I take the, the train every, every day to Central Station, and from there I walk to campus, and it doesn't take more than 25 minutes. So it, it really is a very, a very accessible place. And there's also several local and regional bus routes that stop at LTH. So if you, even if you live like in Malmö, you won't have any, any problem arriving to the campus. Oh yeah, and uh, sorry. Uh, Sparta and Delphi are student housing areas, and these two are very, very close to LTH campus, so people can just walk from there. This is another picture of LTH campus. This is uh, the design building. This building, as well as several others on campus, that have a great, has a great cafeteria, and here you can have breakfast or pika or lunch and just uh, enjoy studying there in some of the tables available. This particular building is actually the building where most of the courses from my master program take place. So my division is there and we usually have most of our courses there. Uh, similar to many other buildings in campus, there's study rooms available for when you have to do group works or you wanna study in, uh, in silent. Uh, this, all, this building also has its own library as well as many other buildings on campus. In total, in Lund University, there's 26 libraries, and there it is very also, also very nice to go and study um, whenever you need to complete an assignment or just read up on, on literature. So about student life. Uh, apart from academic life, student life in Lund is filled with possibilities. There are several student groups you can join, like the LTH skills, which are the ones shown in this picture, and as you can see, they're playing a game. Uh, and the student nations. These groups organize activities all year, all year round, so it is a great way to meet people and have fun. So as you know, Lund is a university student city, so the campus is spread all over the city. 
And this makes it very easy to find activities and people to hang out with all the time. You can also join Facebook groups if you have a particular hobby, like for example, hiking in Skonje, and then you can find people to do these activities with. And also something that's super nice is walking the streets of Lund because um, they're filled with historical buildings and cobblestone streets that will make uh, a very nice view in every season. And just finally, the nations are another great way to get to know people and to, and to have activities all year round. Uh, one thing is that you can, for example, volunteer at the student, as the student-run cafes or the restaurants, and uh, these you can do either at the nations or in the with the student nation, uh, unions at LTH. And this is a great way to get to know people, have some activities, and maybe even get a free meal. So that's very nice. And that would be all for me. Yes, <clears throat> my name is Christine Kleinberg, as I, as I said before, and I was going to tell you a little bit about after the studies. So after studying at Lund University and having a wonderful education and a, a great experience, and after writing a thesis project and defending that thesis, then hopefully everyone will get their master's degrees. And what comes after that? Well, here you can see the graduation ceremony, which is held in the main university building. It's a very beautiful old building in the center of town, and it's a really special ceremony that's held there. But of course, what else happens there? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. One question we get a lot is about PhD studies. If you're not ready to leave academia, or if you're really interested in continuing with your research, uh, after completing your degree on an advanced level, you, there is the option to apply for PhD studies, both at Lund University or other universities as an alternative to seeking employment in the industry or in society. All of our master's programs qualify you for this opportunity. And I will tell you a little bit more about how PhDs work here at the Faculty of Engineering LTH. As you can see here, we've made some uh, quick points. Uh, PhD positions are advertised like jobs. Um, so, okay, you would have to apply as a regular job. You would you do the same. The job is listed on the Lund University website under working with us. And we do not take unsolicited applications. So we don't take any spontaneous applications for PhD positions. Occasionally, work completed during the degree project can lead to a PhD as well. And in this case, it's very important to get to know the teachers in the program, and they can help you get the right contacts, both at Lund and at other universities, and to find collaborative work. A great way also is to use your degree project to get in touch with other companies and in research areas. And that can also help create uh, opportunities in PhD studies. One nice thing about PhD studies here at Lund University and in Sweden is that it's like other jobs and you are get a paid position. The paid position is a four-year position and as an employee it has a lot more security than other types of PhDs. Funding during these four years is secured and you have the chance to work on your PhD up to five if needed. A great way to find a good degree project with a company if you'd like to work into the in, get into the industry is by joining ARCOD. This is the largest career fair in southern Sweden and it's totally and completely organized and run by students. There are more than 200 companies represented and it's a really, really good opportunity to take a CV or a, your resume and find a great degree project with one of, the, with one of these 200 companies. It also, like Mar said, is a fun way to get involved in the student life and get to know Swedes. You can join the team to organize and run this, this career fair and get involved with the student union. So here's a picture of the placement uh, if, of Lund University and Lund City and the Faculty of Engineering in this region. You can see here, it's very easy distance to Copenhagen and Malmö. Uh, in the north, it's very close to Helsingborg. Uh, the city center is Lund there. And in the middle of this picture is the Faculty of Engineering, which is also right next to Idean Science Park. Uh, we are neighbors of Idean Science Park, and there are a lot of large companies placed in Lund. Companies like Axis Communication, Ericsson, Alpha Laval, Arm, and Tetra Pak, just to name a few. 
Campus Helsingborg also works with Mind Park, and that's placed in Helsingborg for those who are studying at that campus. Also located in Lund is Medicon Village, which has 150 different organizations within the life science field. We're not only close to these places in vicinity, but we also have great cooperation with these companies and the rest of the region. In 2019, the addition of the EU Cultural and Creative Monitor came out and named Lund the number one city for its size. They wrote, the city shows a remarkable ability to generate new jobs, coming first on jobs in the new media and communication enterprise, and fourth on jobs in new enterprises and other creative sectors. So this is a very, very creative region, and I'm going to describe a little bit more about how you can be creative as a student at Lund University. Here you can see some design, some industry design master students who have won the IF Design Awards with a special lamp they created during their master's program. Other awards recently this year are architectural students who won first prize in the international competition Rome Collective Living Challenge. Another international award for food technology was won by the students in IFTSA Developing Solutions for Developing Countries competition. We also had some master's students in biotechnology recently come home with a gold in IGAM. Another competition that's quite well known and often participate, uh, many students from the university participate in is Venture Cup. And that includes a 5,000 crown, Swedish crown prize. Another special feature of the university is called Venture Lab. This is a company incubator and startup for Lund University students. They, also, they have a three month program to help you get started. They have a startup boot camp. They have office spaces available for, for you to use. It's a great work, uh, place also that you can start networking. And they also hold lots of events like ha hackathons. So if you'd like to continue to learn more about uh, LTH here at Lund University, you can follow us on Instagram at LTH underscore Lund University. Another great way to find out more about the students' experience at, here at, in the in master's programs, like Mara is doing, is by looking at our blog, engineering.blog.lu.se, and there they can write about life in Lund as well as their programs. And of course, you can feel free to contact us. Here are the contact details for Helene and myself. These are the programs we're working with, so feel free to email us if you have any questions about these programs. We also have two colleagues who are not here today. And here you can find their contact details, Nika Jakobsson and the program she's working with, as well as Cecilia Nielsen and her programs. Okay.